Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, and we always put on the backup recorder, don't we, Mason? That's right. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, is the backup recorder, presser of buttons. That's Nick Mason. Presser of button. Button, yeah. One button. Well, there's two buttons. Actually, there's a series of buttons because I have to plug it in. Yeah, plug it in. Well, computer. I plug it in. Actually. Well, you plug it in. You hand me the cord and I that's, plug it that in. That is true. That's teamwork. That's yeah. teamwork right there. You plug it in, but you plug it into a computer for power. Yeah. So then it's like, do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to connect USB? Something. I'm like, no. Stay out of my computer. I have to push the menu button so it doesn't do that, and then it's ready to record. That's right. And then you push record, and it's ready to go. Now, uh, Collins, who edits these podcasts, he mm-hmm. reminded us. We started this podcast on September 30th, 2013, mm. which basically means that this is it's been 10 years. Mason. Whoa. And what does that mean to you? Let's crack open some sugar-free sodas. I only got water. Oh, well, too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And let me tell you this. This has been out of the fridge for quite some time. It's true. Mm. Uh, so, I don't know, last time we did a thing, I think Claire got us a cake. Or did you get me a cake? I got you a humorous cake. Yeah. That made fun of all your shortcomings. That's right. I, you, you, you'd, been <laughs> on, you'd done two fewer two episodes less. than me, yeah. Uh, but Claire's in Norway and you didn't bring a cake. That's correct. <laughs> Because like a lot of long-standing anniversaries and, and, and big-time events, once you've been doing it long enough, you forget. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, we'll probably do, I don't know about the something, but the 500th episode is coming yeah. up in a few weeks. That's so right. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to perform it live at every listener's house. That's right. We're going to record it once. Yep. And we're going to transcribe it. Mm-hmm. And then we're going we're to we're fly around the world. And read. And read it. Yeah, yeah. Read it verbatim. That's exactly and right. And it will be covering the movie Snake Eyes. Uh, big news this week, though, Mason. Ooh, we're going to be news. talking about one of the big releases of this week because there's been a few, but we're going to talk about The Creator. Oh, yes. We're going to talk about the passing of a couple of Hollywood and TV legends. Mm. We're going to talk the writer's strike. It's come to Ooh, an end, some yes. of it. It came, it came, pretty much came to a, to an end uh, just after we recorded the last yes. week's episode. So but that's that's good for us because, you know, we've... we've it's we content. Can, we can talk about it. It's content and we can, you know, well, there was a lot of fo- you know follow-ups and fallout and so forth, so... Yep, exactly. Yeah. We're going to talk about what's going on with the DCU, as in has it started yet? Spoiler alert, apparently not. Apparently we thought it had, <laughs> but we've been duped by that cad, James Gunn. I mean, they told us it was starting, didn't they? They, they did. said it's starting. I'm sick of them. Yeah. I'm sick of them and I'm on the side of us. Exactly. But the listeners, I'm on the side of us. You can be on the side of them if you want, I James. will be on the side of them. I just like to keep an open What's it like over there? What's it like? With them. It's nice. It's cool, refreshing drinks. Unlike your warm drink, which has been out for too long. Yeah. Damn, I I knew they would have had... And also, over here, we actually look down on you. Because you're an elite. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Damn. I'm only doing this because I like to see both sides. You know that. Damn, I knew them would have colder drinks (laughs) and a better vantage point. Why don't you come over here? I've kicked the ladder down. That's right. It's actually a literal vantage point. (laughs) That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, we're going to do trailers for Rick and Morty Season 7, which you potentially watched. I did. Uh, and Matthew Vaughan's new movie, Argyle. Mm. We're going to talk about the Marvel's runtime, some Secret Wars secret news, Mason. Secret Wars secret It's not news. an exclusive, but we'll talk about that. We're <laughs> going to talk about what Martin Scorsese also thinks. It's a new segment. Not an exclusive. Not an exclusive. Everyone's else. talking about it. <laughs> we cherry-picked our own reactions from what other people said. We're last to the gate. <laughs> Right. Is that an expression? And we got stuck. <laughs> We're both like, uh, uh, we we to elbows together. The same time. Come on, man. Uh, Martin Scott says he's talking about cinema again. They've run out of stuff at the craft <laughs> services table. Oh. We got there and there's nothing. Ah. Um, well, I'd get something because, mm. you know. The You're in the elites. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. would have, would have <laughs> saved you a... Uh, Probably a sausage and bread. Keep it in the, in the warmer. I would love that. You. Yeah. I had a couple the other day. Pretty good, right? Tremendous. At Bunnings? No, at my work. Oh, well, that wouldn't have a sausage sizzle for. Football. Early Christmas party? A football. For the football? Football sausage sizzle. At your work? Yes. You had a football sausage sizzle yes. at your work and you went. No, I was just there. I was going to say, I don't feel like that's something you would have gone I didn't out go on my. Before. I didn't go on my off hours. I was <laughs> yeah. there. I showed up and I'm yeah. like, oh, sausages. Uh, that's wild when work's like, do you want to come in? No. What are you talking? No, obviously not. And then Martin Scorsese is like cinema, et cetera. Yeah. And then the creator. Yeah. He said the thing that people are forcing him to say. Yeah. Give his honest opinion. They're making him and then say we, it. And then they twisted his words. Yep. They twisted those words. And I love that. Mm. Let's talk about this first, though. A couple of, a couple of big names passed away, mm. one of which being Michael Gambon has passed yes. away at the age of 82. People might probably most famously know him as second Dumbledore. Mm. Uh, look, I've said this before. I think all the Dumbledores except uh, Judalore have been miscast. Oh, yes. Uh, but... 
He's a terrific actor. Mm. Let's not deny that, Mason. I was never going to and deny it. And in a statement it. via NPR, it said he was a beloved husband and father. Michael died peacefully in hospital with his wife Anne and son Fergus at his bedside following a bout of pneumonia. Mm. Um, one thing, fun thing to look up is just interviews with Michael Gambon. There's one on Top Gear where he's just like, I hate doing interviews and I just lie through all the interviews that <laughs> right, I do because yes, I hate yes. doing them. Uh-huh. Just a real character it seems as if, Mason. Yeah. Um, yeah. Recipient of... Three Olivier Awards, two Screen Actors Guild Awards, four BAFTAs. There you go. Ooh, wow. But yeah, I mean, you know, his his career has included. Uh, he, he's in The Insider. He's in Gosford Park. Uh, he's in The King's Speech, if you recall. Yes. He's in The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. And, yeah. he's, a, and he's a voice in uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Mm. So, you know, cool. pretty great. That's pretty great, man. Uh, and he's also the singing detective. I don't know if you've ever seen the 1980s. I have not. Singing detective. Okay, that's pretty good. That's, a, that's good stuff. Who directed that? That's a great question. I can look it up. Okay. Let's see who does it first. Singing detective. Well, I'm going to give up then. The singing detective. Dennis Potter. Oh, okay. Well, there Wait, you no, he wrote. He, he wrote it, Mason. He wrote it. He wrote it. He wrote it. Yeah. John Amiel. Dunno. Dunno, Mason. Wow, Probably. great. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so that sucks. But, you yeah. know, 82, pretty good innings, obviously. Yeah, but uh, 82 sure. also, it doesn't feel that old anymore. You know I mean? People That's are true. living longer, which I think is bad. But They're also, living longer, but li- living wronger. Yeah. That's, that's what true. I say. <laughs> but I think he was living writer. Yeah. No, he was. Although he wasn't a writer. No, he wasn't. No, I'm sure, you know, there, when you're acting, there is a certain amount of uh, your own uh, writing and experience that you bring to a role. Wouldn't mm. you agree? Like all his magic. Exactly. Like all the magic his he learned. Skill at doing magic. Harry Potter. Uh, mm. The other one was um, uh, David McCallum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, you know more about this guy than I well, do. Well, he, I mean, you would definitely recognize I would him. say modern day audiences would know him best. He, he, was, he was a long running character on NCIS. He was, he was Dr. Donald Mallard or Ducky. He's the medical examiner on Very that show. Good. But also in the 60s, he was on uh, the TV show The Man from Uncle, the original Man from Uncle. Beautiful so he, work. he was Ilya Kuryakin, who was the Russian half. Oh, okay. So right, the, yeah, um, yeah. the army hammer role in the movie. Don't say that. Okay, but so, that's a terrible that thing is a to terrible say thing. about a man who died. Yeah, he's better. He's better than <laughs> so. But all, uh, so yeah. So as the name would suggest, the man from Uncle was originally supposed to be like more of a solo project. So um, Napoleon Solo. It, Napoleon Solo, exactly. Yeah. Um, Robert Vaughn was Napoleon Solo. Yeah. And Ilya Kuryakin was supposed to be like sort of a sidekick, you know, assistant. He'd show up sometimes or yeah. what have you. But then. <laughs> Show up sometimes. Yeah, show up sometimes. Yeah. Um, but then, like, people, I'm not coming in today. People responded to him so well that yeah. they were like, "Well, make him, make him the other half." Yeah. So, yeah. Unreal, Mason. Big, big time, big career. He's in The Great Escape as well. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Love The Great Escape. Well, also, here's a fun thing. He was a musician in the '60s mm. as well. I knew this, but I didn't know any specifics. Uh, so I, I did some, did some listening, and he's sort of, he, he, he's, it was sort of, I would say, it was like kind of groovy instrumental soundscapes. It was that kind of vibe from the 50s. You may not know specifically where you recognise this from. This is a song he did called The Edge. Okay. Have a listen to this. Here we go. Ah, I know this. What was that remixed into? (laughs) <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's the I next. I did epi- not know that's that. That's the next episode. So that's Doctor Dre and Snoop Dogg. Oh, uh, but yeah, damn. like like so he is responsible for like one of the most memorable yeah. hip hop beats of all time. But also the acting. Absolutely. Isn't yeah. that a bit of fun? I, that guy did way more than I thought. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. What an yeah. incredible career. Mm. Makes Michael Gambon, you know, not. I mean, both great. Mm. But if I'll, you had to pick one, I'll say, no, I'm going to say one. both. I, I'd see both sides. Wow. From up here? From up there on your big vantage point. <laughs> it boy. feels great. Wow. And there's a cool breeze and wow. I have a nice drink and a linen shirt. Oh, my God. That's incredible. <laughs> just just wrinkled just perfectly so? Yeah, that's right. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well, I'm down here in a burlap sack just sweating away. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing socks and you've got one foot in a puddle. <laughs> no <laughs> shoes. <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 anyway. Just drink my warm soda. <laughs> <laughs> the writer's strike is over. Mm. Um, Which isn't went, to say the strikes are over. No, I'll well, we'll get to that. But, but um, uh, yeah. I just, and incredible result. Like yeah. uh, they, they pretty much got everything. Which is incredible, especially because at the start the studios were like, "You're actually being unreasonable, mm. and you don't under- you don't understand how the business works." And also, we are going to make you lose your homes. Yeah, that's right. Which is a nice, fun, normal thing to say, and definitely yeah. makes you seem like the good guys. And I see both sides, yeah. but at this point of view, it seems as if this is like a really good thing for the writers. And I know, again, we've had this discussion about like people are like who cares about writers and whatever in Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. And mm. again, I say like, well, what are you doing here? How did you get to this podcast? <laughs> but like this 
is a good example of mm. collecting collective bargaining like That's true. as a whole. Mm. And they got a, a bunch of good results in terms of I like, can I can read a term, quick summary. Please, including like. a, a bit of fighting back against AI, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, so discussing film on Twitter, great Twitter account who have been like supporting this the entire way. They they've done uh, just some highlight stuff. This isn't everything, but this is like a lot of the main stuff. Studios provide the WGA details of a show's viewership, including total number of hours streamed worldwide. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to be released to the public, mm. but that means you can base the residuals that you get from a show airing. Like, if, basically, the more the show is seen, yep. the more money you mm-hmm. get, essentially, which makes sense. Foreign residuals are now based on the streaming service's number of foreign subscribers, a 76% increase. The writers agreed on terms to ensure minimum staffing in the writers' room. This was a big deal because often they'd understaff writers' room, mm. they wouldn't pay people properly, or they do like these. They're not, they'd be like, these are creative spaces where you can just shoot out. Like, people come in and you, you take spend half a day and you you get out all your ideas and then you leave yep. and then they get a couple of people just to be like okay flesh out these ideas yeah, yeah. and then the original people don't get any exactly money for it, yeah you know? so or they get like a hundred bucks for the day exactly or so in development rooms at least three writers including the showrunner are guaranteed ten weeks of employment so that's nice. really good and once a show is greenlit there's a minimum amount of writers that are required for the TV series mm. so you can't just be like again there's two people on this yeah, and, yeah. and good luck I mean there's a couple there's a couple of guys uh, the, isn't the guy who behind Yellowstone wasn't he like well I actually write everything myself and it's a really good show. Maybe you do write everything. I yourself. didn't finish the pilot, so I don't know. But who am I to say? Well, we don't know. We're out no, of time. No, yeah. Exactly, yeah. But yeah, and, and look, that's fine. You know what mm. I mean? Like, that's an example of that working. Yeah. But most of the time, that is not that's the case, true. like, at all. Mm. Uh, do you have also there, I think, the some stuff? provisions in terms of like, if 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 you get brought into work on a script, they have to disclose if they made it with AI yes. before they yeah yeah. And I think one of the things was if you re if you have to rewrite the script, that counts as an original piece of work if it is mm. AI. Yeah. So AI can't write or rewrite literary material, and the AI generated material not be considered source material. A writer can choose to use AI, but the studio cannot require the writer to use AI software. Studios must disclose if writers to writers if any material given to them has been generated by AI, as you mentioned. And the WGA reserves the right to assert that exploitation of writers' material to train AI is prohibited by the agreement or other law. Because with the way that AI currently works, and probably always will, that it can only put out what you put in. Mm. So if an AI is punching up a script of like, write a new episode of Doctor Who, that's based on the input that it has from the episodes of Doctor Who that has been put into it. That's true. Which have previously already, somebody has made that. Oh my God, it's the Daleks. Yeah. Mm. There's too many of this. Do- ah, we got them. <laughs> there was a big switch in the middle of one of them and we pressed it and they all fell over. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's cool. That's a, they can use that actually. You can just have that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This Not is, for free. No, obviously, obviously yeah. yeah. This is all. Uh, this is also a three-year deal because everything is moving so rapidly. This mm. all gets reassessed. Yes. Uh, and three years, like that'll come around fairly quickly. And I mean, in this three time, years, in three years, mm. this is the kind of stuff where, and this is, I think, most workplaces, you just got to keep pushing back, and you can't let the studios or you know whoever's in charge dictate the terms of this because that's right. They'll just fuck you. Again, like yeah. they don't care. So you have to make them. Do it. That's right. Which isn't ideal, but that's just how it is. And it's worked. Yeah. Anyway, it's not all good news. Ah. Uh-huh. Um, for one, I know you hate this. Nothing, it seems at this point, is uh moving up. Anything that's been delayed. Oh, it's remaining delayed or get, so I know being you were delayed like, even Oh, I want to see Deadpool 3 or whatever. I know you wanted that. I uh, do. You will, mm. but it won't move back to its original spot. Oh, come on, mate. Yeah. Also, uh the American Sounds like the writer's fault. <laughs> also, the American office is getting a reboot. Incredible. Uh, so, and there's an Australian version of the office on the way as well. That's right. Mm. So Puck revealed that Greg Daniels, who adapted the series for the US from the original British show. Puck. It, yes. The character from a Midsummer's Night. That's correct, yes. Is set to do a reboot of the office. The series is apparently one of the many that will make the fire hose. He's doing a little <laughs> dance while he reveals it yeah. in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a tangled web we weave. Isn't it? With this reboot of The Office. You, you'll love this. The series is apparently one of many. What will Jim and Pam be up to this time? I don't th- can they, will they use them again? Yeah, no, probably not. The series is apparently. Who will be the troublemaker and the prankster? I mean, if I was to do it, you mm-hmm. just do it like you bring Dwight back and you just bring some new people and. Oh, Dwight would be the office manager. Yeah. Now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like Scrubs interns. Like Scrubs interns. Well, that, that worked well. Yeah, I agree. The series is apparently one of the many that will make up a fire hose of announcements of projects and casting once the strikes are officially concluded, which they have. Um, and speaking of, the actors' strike mm. is still currently happening. That's right. So, so don't that, do any acting out there. No, you're not allowed to. Um, that looks as if it's going to be wrapping up shortly mm. because you need 
You need both. They need their actors to promote their films. Like I know like the creator this week, Gareth Edwards came out and he just had the names of all the actors on his shirt and he walked the red carpet by himself. That's right. You know? Mm. And it looks like. It said, I'm with stupid. And then the names of all the actors he worked with. (laughs) And then he said, John David Washington. Uh, Others. (laughs) Others. He doesn't remember. He doesn't remember. Others. (laughs) You know who you are, even if I don't. Uh, (laughs) And also it looks like a video game strike is going to move forward through oh. SAG after they did a vote mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it got unanimously decided upon. Um, that is up in the air at this point at the time of recording. So this is all, again, they didn't get everything, mm. but this is all very good news. Yeah. And, again, there's a lot of this happening, particularly in the US at the moment, with collective bargaining, and I just think it's delightful and I wonderful. am very excited for actual streaming numbers to get leaked. Mm. And they will. Yeah. Technically they're not supposed to, mm, yeah, yeah. but come on, we know. On, yeah. Yeah. Do it for us. Come on. Yeah. Come on, guys. Do it for us. Yeah. Because they, they do play, we talked about it, they walk that line of like, oh, this is the most successful thing we've ever made, but none of these make enough money. Mm. You know, we can't pay anybody. Mm. Which is it? It's both. And I see both sides, Mason. Mm. And here we go. This is some exciting news from the DCU. The DCU hasn't started yet. And it won't start <laughs> until Creature Commandos. Why not ever start? No. Well, that really bodes well for Aquaman 2, which hasn't come out yet. Mm, yep. <laughs> just, sure. just don't worry about that one. Yeah. If you were worried about that one, yeah, Mason. Yeah. James Gunn did a video, wasn't he, where he's like, these are like, these Blue entries are, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. in it, right? But, yeah. Uh, yeah but no, no, as I understand it, what he said was. I've got the quote. Okay. Go on. Well, I, if I can. Go on. If I can roughly misremember it. Yeah. He said something along the lines of. Blue Beetle, the character, yes. will be in the mo- will be in the DCU, the upcoming DCU. But his origin and and you know the events that happen in that movie may not necessarily be canon. Yeah, whatever the character will be back, and anything that happens to the character after the events of like Creature Commando, Superman Legacy, mm. that will be canon. Yep, and it might contradict what happened in the one movie that he was in before that that nobody saw. That nobody saw. Exactly. We'll talk about a few other. Characters. Maybe the Red Blue Beetle he fought was actually a. A, a green, red, blue beetle, for example. <laughs> like a stoplight? Yep. No, yep. it'd be yellow as well, wouldn't it? It's just green. <laughs> this particular red, blue beetle is green. <laughs> and if you remember that blue beetle being a red, blue beetle, you misremembered. Did I? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, I or it's a, but all you could be like was from a different d- dimension, and that's actually cool and part of continuity, and that's cool and interesting, <laughs> okay. I think. Well, as long as it's cool. It's cool. As long as I didn't misremember it, something mm, cool happened. That's right. So James Gunn said on Twitter, nothing is canon until Creature Commandos next year. A sort of apetith. Apetith. We have a lot of those up here, by the way, on the balcony. You would, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, great. Right. A lot of canapes and apetith. Oh, my God. A little uh, sangria and a little gra- glass. That's right. You dog of a bloke. One of those nice little pancakes. They've got like the cream cheese kind of thing mm-hmm. and maybe a piece of salmon and a, yeah. and a thing through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and then a deeper dive into the universe of Superman legacy after that. It is very human. It is a very human drive to want to understand everything all the time, but it's okay to be confused on what's happening in the DCU since no one has seen anything from the DCU yet. And he said, and yes, some actors will be playing characters they've played in other stories and some plot points might be consistent. That's what you're talking about. Might be consistent with the plot points from the dozen of, dozens of films and shows on animated projects that have come in the past, but nothing is canon mm. until CC, Creature Commandos and Legacy, so some of the characters which we confirmed to come over is John Cena's Peacemaker, mm-hmm, Viola mm-hmm. Davis as Amanda, Amanda Waller, mm-hmm, Blue mm-hmm. Beetle as mentioned, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. apparently Freddie Stromer is going to reprise his role as Vigilante. Okay then, great. So there you go. Love it. Look forward to all of that when they eventually happen. I will and I do. Okay then. Uh, also, at the end of one of his tweets is a little Aquaman um, emoji. Okay. Yeah. To indicate they're burying Aquaman. Yeah. In that trench. That's right. Or he drowned in that puddle of water at he the end of the flash. He drowned in the puddle of water. Yeah. Look, I mean, I'm sure they're not going to immediately go back on Blue Beetle's origin. No, I mean, they don't need to. Yeah. What are they going to – it'll be a, probably in a Booster Gold movie or whatever or yeah. a team up. Or... Oh, that reminds me. Uh, spoilers for Blue Beetle, the movie that nobody saw. Yeah. It's coming up right now. Okay. A couple of spoilers for you. I'm ready. But remember the, the post credit sequence for Blue Beetle. Yeah. And the, the it's like, uh, he's alive, dead cause alive. Yeah. Probably in the future with Booster Gold. Yeah, that didn't, okay. Didn't even occur that's to me a good at the time, idea. But he's probably that's probably I actually, where it that was. Did, did occur to me. I was just waiting for you to catch up. Oh yeah, thanks, man. It's good to let people come to things on their own. Mm. You know, I yeah. feel like that would have driven a wedge between us if I had such <laughs> a good idea. Let me tell you, it would have. <laughs> I reckon if we were reviewing that and you said in the post credit sequence, I think the Ted Cords in the future with Booster Gold, I would have flipped this table and I would have burned this studio to the ground. And fair enough. 
and I'm thinking about it now. But the rage has, you know, subsided a little You're bit. You're handling so. it very with well. The, with the benefit of time and hindsight yeah. and a new Zen mindset I'm developing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. are you developing that? What are you, what are you doing? What are you... Smashing stuff. Oh, yeah. I've got one of those r- rooms where you smash stuff. <laughs> Is it just a room in your house? Yep. Or whatever room that you're in in your yes, house? Yes, yeah, or a, any room anywhere, <laughs> honestly. Good. Uh, trailers are high. <laughs> we got a new trailer for Rick and Morty Season 7, which mm. the biggest deal is, of course, that they have replaced Justin actors, Roiland. Justin Roiland, who are more stuff has been coming out about. Oh, and no. um, it's not it's not good, is it? I Look, I you know, here's the thing. I, oh, I, you endorse it, do you? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> No, um, I've seen a lot of reactions towards this trailer over the internet. Oh, I meant the things he was doing. Oh, no, I don't endorse those. Cool, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm very zen mm. right now. I think that the trail, de- depending on who you ask, some the, the Rick impression is better or the Morty impression is better yeah. or they're both bad or you can't tell can't the difference. Tell, yeah. I think the Rick impression, to me, the Rick impression was better than the Morty impression. I, I, I could tell for both of them, but I don't care. It also, I think you'll lean into it yeah. fairly quickly. Also, I think one of two things. One is that it's a person just reading from a script, yes. whereas opposed to Royland would, I guess, improv a lot and then they would animate to that. I guess so. Would, it, yeah. So it does. It, to me, it does feel like somebody like it's it. You know, there's there's less of a. It's a very uh, straight ahead. Well, like on track, on track, like and a, on script on kind rails. of thing. Yeah, yeah. Also, we can't rule out yet that it's not just an AI doing it. <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't go, and by the way, I mean, I think the the number one reason they haven't released a cast. Oh, I, I have the. I have, oh, have it there. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, but well, no, I, you say yours. Well, I was going to say uh, they probably would want to give a little distance because the voice actors are going to get death threats. You're pretty much spot on. So via THR, they said we want to keep the. We wanted to. We wanted the show to speak for itself. We believe in the strength of the season and our new voices, and we want to pr- preserve the viewing experience for fans. But yeah, I think it is like you want to kind of let. See how people react to it before you throw these people under the bus. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and there's going to be people who'd like never come around to it, really. Yeah. But and there are a lot of people who are never going to notice. Yep, also. exactly. So, yeah. uh, that's October 15th. So that's yeah. coming up in a few weeks. Mm. Uh, but no, it, it looks like there's going to be some fun stuff in it. Fun stuff. Uh, season seven. Bloody hell, mate. Bloody hell, time flies, doesn't it? Must be nice. Yep. <laughs> Passage of time? I, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So for you, the. Flow of time doesn't exist. Yeah, it's nice. I'm saying it must be nice, it must and it be is. Nice. Mm. Um, it's nice. That is nice. You know what else is nice? There's What's another that? trailer. I know oh. you just watched this because I watched you watch it. Mm. It's for Matthew Vaughan's Argyle. It's not. It's it's for, from the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughan. Please. Twisted mind of Matthew Vaughan's Argyle. Mm. Um, it's Argyle. It's Argyle. So <laughs> he, if you don't know Matthew Vaughan, he directed the movie Layer Cake, but then he directed the first Kick Ass, and then he directed the Kingsman movies. Mm. Um, I, I enjoy his films for the yeah. most part. And one of the X Men movies. Oh yeah, two of the X Men movies. Which first is class. my favorite. It's one of my favorite mm. X-Men movies. Um, so, yeah, this is a new spy thriller, but they tell you that this might not be what well, it – you might not know what it seems. I know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've said well, – do you I, think they should have spoiled this? Uh, that's a great question. So, I mean, the if I recall as well, the – the marketing campaign some months ago, and I think that because of the, how fast the new, the news cycle moves now, we've all forgotten about this. But I believe the original marketing push for this movie was something like, "Well, it's it's based on a book by a by an author, and she's you know she's very mysterious, and we don't know much about her." Okay. But then you can't do that now because people will figure it out immediately. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But obviously that that was all a little bit of movie magic. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And the and the the reveal of this is that. We initially think it's just your classic spy thriller, but then it turns out it's it's being written by uh, Bryce Dallas Howard's That's character, right. but she is somehow predicting events of or has a yeah no understanding of how espionage unfolds or something. Mm, so yeah. so the events she's written in her book are uh, have come true mm-hmm. to some degree, and and so they they want to get her so she can. Predict or think of a thing that's going to happen. That's going to happen. I don't yeah. know. But anyway, good cast. Mm. We got we got Henry Cavill so with you've a, got your fictional with a, world. Yeah, that is Henry. also real. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, because also there's a there's a in this trailer there's a moment because he plays Argyle, yeah. Agent Argyle, who's like your James Bond character with an awful flat top. Mm. And then at the end of the trailer, they're like, "Now we're going to meet the real Argyle." But who is it? Maybe it's Henry Cavill again. Might be with a different haircut. Different haircut. Mm. But anyway, uh, Henry Cavill's in it. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, Brian Cranston is in this. The great Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. Dua Lipa. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Recording artist. Yeah. 
For young people? For young people exclusively. Mm. Yeah, that's right. What is she performing that's up there? That's why you said it in that way. Yeah, She's performing you, up there in yeah, your even, overtown. Uh, even above me. Whoa. Yeah, which I don't like, by the way. Oh, makes you feel like a real grub, doesn't it? Does, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I um, anytime Sam Rockwell plays like a killer, I, uh-huh. I or like Confessions of a Dangerous, Dangerous Mind. mind yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the, which is the one? Seven was he in Seven Psychopaths? I don't know. Maybe. Thank you. Might have been. I'm be thinking of something else. What's the one he did with Anna Kendrick, where he's like an assassin guy as well? Ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, mm. he's a good actor. He is a good actor. I don't right? care I what so. you say. I mean, a lot of this, a lot of this movie looks like. Very filmed on a green screen. None of this is real situation. There is that element on yeah, it, sure. But otherwise, maybe it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love when movies don't feel like they're happening. Mm, same, same. But it's the, really, really makes me feel like I'm there. You I know? mean, there's a well, in a green screen volume a, situation yes, where nothing's real. But, there, but I it, feel like I'm right there. And yeah, I think that's cool. But there is. I feel like to Matthew Vaughan's movie, there's always been that hyper reality. Sure. So uh-huh. I don't necessarily think this is going to be a problem. He doesn't make like fucking hideous movies. That is true. You know, so mm. in my opinion, Ooh. except when Elton John did that big karate kick mm. in that movie, that Kingsman sequel. Yeah. 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 That's a bad movie. That's a bad movie. I agree. <laughs> and that's that's quite recent as well. Yeah. And which, I'm ha- which suggests the trajectory but is I going thought down. The third Kingsman, Kingsman mm. prequel. Was actually quite Yeah, but good. did he direct that? Yes, he did. Oh, he did. Okay, well, good yeah. for him. Mm. Unless Let. he didn't. Mm. Which he did, though. Oh. Fairly confident. Uh, what do you ask him if he's up there in your ivory tower? No, he's actually down there with you. Oh. Yeah. A grub. Yeah. I don't <laughs> want to talk to anybody down here. <laughs> <laughs> Not even director Matthew Moore? No, no. I feel he'd be a British grub, wouldn't he? He's wearing one of those little... Oh yeah, maybe yeah. Pinky blinders hats. Yeah, yeah. He's wearing a like he's wearing a a, a, a tie and a waistcoat, but yeah. like maybe no shirt underneath. Exactly. And so he's all ragged. Maybe some New Balance shoes. Maybe some. Maybe, yep. But they're dirty. They're like an old. Pair. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, out February. Anyway, let's talk about the Marvels, uh, which uh, which is a movie that's coming out. That has been confirmed as the shortest ever MCU movie, coming in at an hour forty five. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm hoping that's it's just like a. It's Lean not, and mean. Yeah, it's not cut down because it's like dreadful. Yeah, I'm uh-huh. hoping that it's like mm. this is a real lean fun experience. We will know if it starts with Iman Vellani doing a, like a like a voiceover. Okay. It's like I never thought uh, I never thought I'd get into an adventure like this with my idol Captain Marvel because then you know they're just skipping a bunch of stuff. Yeah, they're skipping a bunch of stuff and they didn't write enough. Yeah. Like they they got in the editing bay and they went we didn't film enough to yeah. make a movie that makes sense, so we're going to have to add a voiceover to this. I think that's probably going to happen. Oh, no. <laughs> I suspect. But look, honestly, at this point, I think it looks fun. Mm. And we'll see. Yeah. And people will probably come back and go, I can't believe you thought that it looked fun. And it came out and it wasn't fun. I can't believe that either. I that's... couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, you were there and you couldn't believe it. That's when right. I said that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the room. <laughs> yeah, man. Mm. Let's talk about Secret Wars. Okay. Um, so... This is the upcoming movie, Secret Wars. So this is the. This is the f- Finale to the upcoming to, to the present. Uh, oh, is it, so it's fight. Kang and it's Kang it's Dynasty, Wars, maybe, Fuck, right, or Secret on. Wars, yep. or maybe who knows what they're doing with it? Because it's the last two, so maybe they'll merge them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe they'll skip Kang Dynasty because yep. it doesn't play well anymore. Maybe Kevin Feige will quit. Maybe Kevin Feige will quit. Yeah. Maybe you'll sell it. Maybe he will sell everything to Apple. Oh, well, I'd love just that. on his own. Yeah. Can he do that? Just an under the ta- under the table he's deal. Just done it. Yeah. yeah. Disney's like, what's happening, Kevin? And he's like. I don't report to you anymore. <laughs> I report to the guy who was in Steve Jobs, but he's the other guy. Yeah. Tim Tim Apple. Tim Apple. Yeah. Mm. That's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so this is by- I'm keeping the money. <laughs> I'm Kevin Feige. He would too. Mm-hmm. This is by My Time to Shine Hello. There's posted a, there was an image. That person reliable. Um some are and some aren't. Okay. But this, this was confirmed. So by, no, is no, the answer. No, 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 because this is confirmed by another person. Oh. So that's why I put it in. Um, this is what Secret Law was going to be like, and there's a photo, and there's Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, Chris Evans, Human Torch, and that whole team, Thomas Jane Punisher, Nicolas Cage, Ghost Rider, Ben Affleck, Daredevil, I think we heard he's not in it, um, Wesley Snipes' Blade, Lou Ferrigno, Hulk. But can we get some toast said? Pretty much. Although some of those fox verse Marvel characters won't be making it out of Deadpool 3. It's just missing Tom Holland Spider-Man as the lead in Avengers Secret Wars. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man will appear, but he won't be the lead. So basically, I think we've talked about this before, it seems as if Deadpool 3 is going to lead up into a big X-Men Fox send-off, okay. plus all those other universes that were in the early to mid-2000s. Right, okay. The Fantastic Fours and your Nicolas Cage mm. Ghost Riders and okay. maybe your Eric Banner's Hulk. I don't Maybe. Maybe your Eric Banner's Pointer. Yeah. Maybe Eric Banner's Chopper. Oh, yeah. Maybe Eric Banner's Love the Beast. Maybe you're Eric Banner's Troy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Maybe Eric Banner's the, the one lucky you, where he's a, he's a poker guy. Maybe he's Eric Banner's the dry. Oh, yeah. And Eric Banner's the sequel to the dry, but they're separate guys because they're different universes. No, they're not, are they? They are. What? No, I've decided they are. Oh, okay. Yeah. In this universe, <laughs> the universe they're separate, separate guys. guys. Okay, yeah, I yeah, gotcha. yeah, 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 yeah. And they uh, fist fight over who's better at detecting a, 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 a sorted undercurrent to a tiny town. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm better at this, you son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, And then they probably reboot. They start again. Sure, yeah, yeah. With X-Men and all the Avengers are recast and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of them won't be. Yeah. I'd imagine. Mm. So that's fun. Movies are fun again. You didn't think they were. I thought they were just dr just just dreary. <laughs> but it sounds like they're going to be fun again. We're still in dreary, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they'll be fun again. I agree. Well, let's talk about fun because this is what Martin Scorsese said about movies via GQ. Just movies? Yeah. I think they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> the danger there is what they're doing to our culture. Because there is he's like, talking about superhero movies, yeah, not just movies. Yeah, I think he's talking like just blockbusters. generic blockbusters. Yeah, junk. yeah. Because you said movies. Yeah, you said here's what Martin Scorsese thinks about movies, and if he's just like, you know, thinking about movies, they're dangerous. This is all movie. movies, including my movies. <laughs> I'm a dangerous man. Arrest me! Come and get me! Um, I've got a katana. Did you know he has a katana? <laughs> yeah, he brings it to all these press conferences. I bought it off eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get me! I'll be studying the blade. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because there's going to be generations now that think movies are only those. That's what movies are. He's talking, yeah, comic movies. Uh, they already think that, which means that we have to fight back stronger. And it's got to come from the grassroots level. It's got to come from the filmmakers themselves. And you'll have, you know, the Safdie brothers. And you'll have Chris Nolan. You know what I mean? And hit them from all sides. Hit them from all sides. You don't give up. Let's see what you got. Get out there and do it. Go reinvent. Don't complain about it. But it's true because we've got to save cinema and people are like uh christopher nolan actually directed the batman movies That's right some uh, of the greatest <laughs> moments of cinema actually marty yeah scorsese and like he probably knows that mm. but i think he's probably talking about all of christopher nolan's movies and mm. not specifically just the batman movies <laughs> That's right i think i think there oh, is... wait, i've got an update he said he's talking specifically <laughs> about the batman movies only the dark knight rises mm. but i i you know he kind of gets grief for this or maybe mm. not so much anymore but he is right yeah like i i what i just want to see stuff and from any level that's like creator driven mm. it doesn't matter and like again like what he level. loves movies he loves movies like if you get if he if, if i get any impression from martin scorsese it's that he loves movies He's, you know, I'm, he doesn't want superhero movies to disappear, I imagine. He just wants the, – the the thrust of this often is like, the you know, the thing about independent cinema or smaller work is that oftentimes they can't get a slot at the movie theatre yeah. because they're, the superhero movie is taking up every, you know, every, 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 every time slot. Every conceivable goddamn screen. That's right. Yeah. So there you go. And a lot of people are like, oh, uh, you know, it's uh, nice of you. This is me. Yeah, because yeah. he's like, oh, nice of you to say this from your ivory tower, the level above me is what you're saying. Where I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As, as if, but like he does a lot for independent He films. absolutely and does. And he, like he like produces people's smaller movies yeah. and he pays for stuff and yep. he preserves, you know, forgotten films. He's a champion of cinema. He's a champion of cinema. And he directed Goodfellas probably. He directed Good, Good, Goodfellas He nearly probably. directed Dick Tracy. That's right. But he didn't. Thank God. That's right. Stepped away. Yeah, the good grace. Yeah. Let Warren Beatty take that bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, speaking of, we're doing The Phantom this week for Caravan of Garbage. Oh, that's right. Somebody thought of a link, and we've already recorded the last one, so we can't oh, okay. include this. But how's this for a link? Because we're trying to figure out how we link all these movies together. Okay. So we did uh, uh, We did Dick Tracy. We're doing The Phantom. We've got The Rocketeer. We've got The Shadow. And we're going to do Green Hornet. And uh, Michael Talks Too Much says, my pitch Call them retro vigilantes. Oh, I think that's the best link we've had. I mean, so sure. Far. Except Dick Tracy is a you know he's a he's a licensed member of the oh, the fuck, police department. Yeah, he is too. He's not a vigilante, is he? No. Except in the occasions where maybe he takes his. You know, sometimes he sometimes does. Sometimes he loses his badge. I sometimes guess. Sometimes he won't give Dustin Hoffman a glass of water. That's true. That's vigilante. That is vigil vigilantism. You're absolutely yeah. right. All right, let's okay. That's the best so far, is what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm just looking for a title for when I package these together as nice as one set okay. when I'm on holidays in right. January. I would I would maybe call it four okay movies and one really bad movie. <laughs> Guess which? Question <laughs> quiz. Yeah. Hashtag emotional. You'll think we're not there yet. If you are, you, 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 we, we just say it. Yeah, it's coming up. Any? Do you have one bit of news this week? You don't have to. Obviously. Well, think about David McKellen. Oh yeah. Mm. You brought the de the news of the death of a man. And the, the and all the things that the he Dr. did. The Dr. Dre stuff, blah, yes. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right, should we move it along? Yeah, let's move it along. All right.
Wow. So look, uh, big box office week. Oh, yes. People are like, it's Saw Patrol. Oh, yes. Because Sorks, Saw X has come out, and so has Paw Patrol, but it's got a little bit of competition. Yes. From a movie called The Creator. Oh, an original an original IP. Yeah, like an idea someone thought of, independent of They the- thought of it from a comic book. No. They thought of hey. it from a real book? No, it's, no, no. You know how, like, have you ever, how do I explain this? Have you ever, like, there, you didn't have anything in your brain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, sudden, good, yep. you then there was something which you could then articulate. Like Spider-Man. Yeah, kind of. Because I saw Spider-Man on the telly. That, I saw Spider-Man on the telly yeah, and then yeah, yeah, Spider-Man's yeah, yeah. in my okay. brain. But imagine if you didn't. But you did think of Spider. You never. Saw I did him. think of Spider. No, but you never saw him. But you still thought of it. That's impossible. <laughs> that's impossible, James. <laughs> well, that's you're what stupid. <laughs> I am stupid. You're stupid man. <laughs> Spider Man. You just looked. He's on the telly, and you see him, and you yeah, think of Spider Man. Yeah, I know. I just didn't... try it one time. Maybe you like it. <laughs> you bloody elitist. So the creator mm. on a budget of eighty million dollars somehow. Ooh. We're going to spe- specify how. Seems like it's it only needs to have a twenty million dollar US opening weekend to do well. It oh. needs one hundred and sixty million worldwide to break even. Okay, which I feel like it should. Mm. They also are backed by Disney because Twentieth Century Studios uh, now have now have this. Mm. Though it started at what was the other production company? Oh, was it Regency or something? I don't know. What was it, Mason? I'll just what? think. I'll just think of it in my mind, shall I? I'm, well, if it already exists, you should be able to Mason. Like Spider Man. Like Spider New Regency. There you go. New Regency. Not Regency. New God. Regency. Wow. The yuck. Imagine it was old Regency. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Again, uh, so we'll, we'll talk more specifics again how that's, uh, how this all came to be because, I mean, visually, my goodness. Mm. But what do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. Mm. All right, it's the future. Yep. But maybe in a parallel earth? Seems to be twenty sixty something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's the future, and it's a it's a it's a post apocalyptic future mm-hmm. because somebody went and done invented AI, yep. and then then there was a big nuclear explosion. Someone did the Terminator future. Someone did the Terminator future, like a bunch of dum dums. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, but then, but then, uh, the, so now there's there's real so the, uh, AI has been banned from the United States, but it's still around in other places. Yep. And the United States is like, I think there's some trouble brewing. We're going to do in a v- place not America. Yeah, we're going to do Vietnam. Let's do Vietnam in not America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, they, we we think we think AI has got something cooking, and it could be bad for us, the yeah. world. And by that we mean America. And by that I mean they they mean the big ship that flies around the world and, and drops bombs on people. Yeah, they've built that. They it's love. pretty cool. It's yeah. like a big trade federation ship. Yes. And it's always sneaking up on you with its big lasers. It's a Thunderbird it's ship. It's like a Thunderbird ship, isn't um, it? But anyway, so John David Washington. Yeah. He, he was out. Yeah. He was in, he, he had he had, he had had a love and he had a he had a dream. He had a job being undercover and so on and so forth. Yep. But now he's out of that biz, but they're like, we're going to get you back. You've got the knowledge to find the creator. Yeah. That's the name of the movie. Who's the creator of the all AI. Mm. Uh, and, the, and the weapon. You've you got to get it. Mm. We, we think you can get it. And he's like, I don't want to do it. And they're like, come on, though. Come Just on, do man. it. Just do it. Just fucking do it. God. Duh. Hey, prick, do yeah. it. Yeah. That's what they say to him. And he's like, all right. I'll do it. Yeah. I've just changed my mind. That's right. And then that's I was the... being coy. I was always going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so no, he was get, reluctant. That's what I say. Yeah. He didn't want to do it. Mm. But then he ended up doing it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you feel about this? I liked it a lot. I liked it too. Mm. I will say this. Yes. I think a lot of this is vibes and visually based. Yes. Um, so plot much wise, yeah. I would say it is akin to Avatar. And yes. the plot is fine. Yeah. Like there's not really any surprises. No, and there's some things in it that you're like, does that really add up or whatever? Mm. But that and it's all well and good to be like I know it's ridiculous to be like the strength of this movie is the way it looks, but it's it's not just the way it looks when you kind of know when you know how they made it. Mm. Because it's not just like spectacular CGI and whatever, which there is in this. Yeah. It is like the way that it is done, which again I will get into, which is really the way impressive. that it is done and what and, and speaking of impressive, one thing that really struck me is that Gareth Edwards, who did Rogue One, yep. he's got a great sense of scale. Really like good, I yeah. spent the entire movie going, Wow, Earth's really big, isn't yeah, it? It's too big. It's too big if Someone anything. Shoot a bigger laser at it. Right. Cut the earth but in just, half. But just, Maybe you, just shave off yeah. a bit. You really get a sense, and even in huge blockbusters where there's, you know, heli carriers and and huge monsters, and oh, and of course he did uh, Godzilla he did, movies, yeah, Godzilla and he did movies. the movie monsters, yeah, as well, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, he you really do get a sense when they bring in a big tank or they bring yeah. in a you know a, 
an air, an orbital bombardment from mm. a from a giant platform or any number of other things. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is this is tr- this is this this the scale of this is tremendous. And you really feel it. again, even though it's just you know, I I think it was there was a lot of filming in Thailand. I have so many details. Oh, good, yeah, but 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 mm. you know, so much of this. Obviously, the scale of it is too big to, 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 for it to be practical. Yeah. So a lot of this is CG, but it does like it feels like it's all there. But here's the thing, though. Oh yes, it, uh, most of it mm-hmm. is practical. Oh. And the way that it works, he he's, he said he was friends. I was listening to a bunch of interviews before. He said he was friends with a bunch of um, concept artists, and he basically got them to mock up the idea of what this story was. Yeah. This like this future of where there's AI integrated with regular technology and Mm -hmm. regular people, I should say, and and like earthly environments. So he took those and he took it to the studio, new, new Regency, not old Regency. You wouldn't even bother. God. You turn the door handle, the door handle would come off. Yeah. 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 Uh, We're only interested in movies about um, old things. Old things. Mm. Like a penny farthing. Sure. Like one of those, like a like a cigarette, but like an old one. Oh yes, do you have any of those? I don't have any. No, they so I wouldn't mind one right now. I, I don't have mm, one. Okay. On yeah, but uh, I, I could ask. Sure, if my you dad. Mind. Ask your dad. Sure, <laughs> he's not here, yes. but I can give him a. <laughs> yeah. You want to call him? Give him a call on this on one of those the phone we have over there. That's that. He won't. That, it's got that. Better. It's got like a salt shaker on a bit of on a bit of cable, and you and you you turn the rotary yeah, thing, yeah, and then yeah. you talk into one end, but you. <laughs> You're talking to the thing on the phone, but you listen yeah, on the, the other salt thing. shaker thing yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you could do that. All right, I'll do that. Okay. If you I mean, do I don't that. remember his number, but I'll do it. Well, it's just in my phone, which you told me not to bring. <laughs> well, we are old Regency. <laughs> so, anyway, and they said it's impossible. This is a three hundred million dollar movie. Whoa. This is gonna. This is like Avatar. What wow. you're pitching. So he fired all his friends. He did. He said, he well, his... "You made me look like a fool." Yeah. In front of New Regency. You seen those guys? <laughs> They're frigging jetpacks. <laughs> They cool as hell over there. <laughs> it's like the new brand of cigarettes, whatever yeah. that is. Um, so, he's, so he said, no, listen, this is how I do it. Because he's done this before. Yeah, he does uh, his own special yeah. effects. Or he used so to. he goes, I want to use real locations and a small crew. So basically the way he broke down the numbers of it is that building a set, mm-hmm. like a set you would use in this, costs about $200,000. That's okay. for every set, right? But he said, we he like did the math and what if you flew a small crew, sometimes as little as four people, to locations all around the world, uh-huh. mostly in Asia, as mm. you mentioned. So they were able to go to 80 different locations oh. and shoot all of this, for the most part, like on site. Yeah. And as a result of that, there, there is some green screen, but not much. Yeah, right. There's very there's some stagecraft, you know, the Mandalorian, yes, the LED uh-huh. screens, whatever. But there's a difference between the stagecraft, the volume, Doing it well, or just having actors stand in front exactly. of exactly. There's yeah. a huge difference. Like the 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 guy who invented it and who who was involved, I think, a lot on the first season of The Mandalorian. Yeah, like you can tell when he left. Yeah, absolutely. In the later yeah. seasons of that show, because yeah. people are just like, "Well, it's easy then, I guess." You yeah. just put people in front of the volume. Son of a sand thing. Mm. I know. At one point, they filmed, in, I think, inside like a giant hadron collider, and they were like, uh, "And he was like, they're not going to let me film in this because I want to do explosions and gunfire." Uh-huh. But the people there were just like, "Can you just put us in the movie?" And he's like, "Yeah, all right, whatever." <laughs> Great. Okay. There's a moment where you see like Gemma Chan on a beach, mm-hmm. and. He goes, if we start filming this, people are going to kind of come up and see what's going on. We can't close off this beach. Right. But because it was literally four people, yeah. people were just eating their dinners and whatever. No, but, so they're in the movie, Ooh. just people in the background, Ooh. regular people, because it's so like this guerrilla style. Yeah. And, and what's, what else is incredible is that. They Do they was, have to sign releases? Probably. No, nah, because they're like in the background oh, or whatever. Oh, very convenient. So. It was shot on uh, this Sony camera called the FX3, which is around four thousand US dollars. We can get one of those. We can get one. We need four thousand dollars, basically. Give me, <laughs> give me four thousand dollars. We'll get one now. We'll make a movie. And he did. Mo- he did most of the camera work himself. Mm. Also, because most of it isn't sets, it's all three. It's all like three sixty degree environment, which is impossible to film a lot of the time because when you switch the camera around, because a lot of this is long takes, mm. the, you have to set you switch the around. You see a Seven Eleven in the background, exactly. You see and that's 7-11. not a future Seven Eleven. It's a regular Seven Eleven. You see the crew with the craft services and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they what they did, they had like a lighting rig just on a pole, and they'd hold it b- above the camera behind it, and then they just have the dynamic lighting like happen as they were, they were they were filming it. There's like no proper lighting setup. And also, this was all edited together before. On an iPhone. On an iPhone. I did it on the day. I know. It was all edited together before visual effects. Oh. So the whole thing was locked. Yeah. And then they layered the visual effects mm. over the top. So it's not like 
we would talk about this with like the Marvel movies and what it's not just Marvel, it's mm. all it's all movies. Yeah, yeah. All movies that Scott Scorsese has. Well, well they film they film four hours of footage yeah. and then they do visual effects and they constantly are changing changing and, and revisiting what they want the effect to be yep. over and over and over again and then they edit the movie together yep. once that's finally finished. So he filmed the movie, edited it down, he's like, This is the movie. Yep. This is it's two hours ish long. Yep. And then they put the effects on. Exactly. And presumably he knew what he wanted. Yes. And he went, just do it like this, mm-hmm. make it the best you can, and we we're not gonna make any changes, if I had to guess. And that's why this movie is eighty million dollars. Mm. It's phenomenal. And I don't think everybody is capable of doing this. I don't think every studio would even trust this kind of process. Mm. But this is—I think I think Disney Star Wars might. They, they should might. get him. They should get him to do a movie. <laughs> they might. They should maybe, shouldn't they? Mm. But I feel like, I mean, this is a new way to do things, mm. and it seems really obvious. Sure. But nobody has really done it on this scale before, and it's just you might do it for like a smaller indie project yeah, and right. whatever, and or a short film, whatever. But mm. this is but a long film. No, no, no thank no, you. Just genuinely impressive. Mm. How, how do you feel about the uh, the influence of this? I mean, he's talked about how it's like Vietnam movies. Vietnam movies, yeah. I mean, we've Apocalypse got now, Blade Runner, Star Wars. We got a little yeah. bit of Akira in there. I yeah. think I felt some Akira in there, definitely. Oh, there's some ET in it. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, some Avatar. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. Liked it. Good. Steven Spielberg's AI potentially. Yeah, but I didn't feel like it was overwhelmingly one thing or another. No. Like a lot of people went, oh, is this his independent Star Wars? I mean, it to a degree, but also yes. it's entirely set on Earth and it doesn't – I didn't go, man, this is so Star Wars. Like when Rebel Moon comes out, I'm sure I'll be like, this is really Star this Wars. This is Star Wars, but yeah. they're effing and jeffing mm, with that's each right. other. That's right. Yeah. Forcing and Jediing. Forcing and Jediing, as they say. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I just think uh, – I, I love the – what was that book or show that you recommended where it was just like – it was an art book, and it's like a. Oh yeah, it might Simon, be like a farm, and then there's like a piece of like old Simon, weird Simon machinery or whatever. Simon Stalhag, Simon Stalhag. Mm. He yeah, he's he's done a bunch of yeah. He he was influenced by. Uh, so he used to he started his career doing uh, like landscapes because yeah. he's from Iceland or Sweden or. Mm. You know, one of them. One of them. One guys. of them. One of them. So he started doing these. Oh, I'm tall. I'm in a long yeah, coat. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So a lot of these kind of natural landscapes, and then he discovered the work of Ralph McQuarrie. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, designer for Star Wars, and he just started being like, okay, what about a you know a wheat field, but it's a strange machine is yeah is is is, is tilling the wheat or what have you. And yeah, I got you're absolutely right. I got mm. a bit of that as well. Yeah. Which became that show. The show on Amazon, which is called Rebecca Hall is in it's it. It's called Rebecca Hall is in it. Yes. <laughs> It's called it's it's the name of one of them. So it's not the Electric State. Yeah. It's called the Tales from the Loop. That's the one. Yep. I, I didn't yep. find it in time. There you go. You did it. I did it with my you. mind. You did. I came up with it in my mind. Was that an idea? No, you, you're recalling a thing that already happened. But I, it was you, there was nothing in my mind, like you said, and then yeah. there was a thing in my mind. Oh, okay, then yes, and exactly, it wasn't Spider Man. That's what I was saying. Oh, yes, I did yeah. it. Oh, also, District Nine obviously yes, did, did a version of of this, mm. and it's amazing they kind of taken this long to. Yeah, yeah. Like the District Nine, I would say, because it came out in two thousand and nine or whenever it was, mm. would have been much cheaper. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. the era it came out in. Mm. Um, I think I really like John David Washington in this. I didn't love his character in Tenet. Oh yeah, sure. Uh-huh. I was like, this well, guy's the kind protagonist. of blank and whatever, mm. and, and not saying because he was bad. Yes, because I think he's great in like Black Klansman, and he's great as Denzel Washington's son. That is he true. must be proud because mm. um, he, he sounds a lot like him, doesn't he? Sure does. Boy, does he? But um. I think, yeah. Do you think he's like, hey, Dad, I was just in, I was just in the, the creator. What were you in? Oh, Equalize the Three. Mm. Interesting. Dude, there wasn't, isn't that a TV show now? Yeah. <laughs> Dad? Dad? <laughs> Dad. <laughs> just, a, just a second sequel to that. Okay, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Right. Interesting. Mm. Um, but no, I, I thought. I went to 80, I went to 80 countries. Is that, <laughs> is that anything? Where were you? Just Italy. Okay, great. <laughs> did you Actually, see- that sounds good. That yeah. sounds really good. Did you, did you see Three Equalizer? No. I meant to watch Two Equalizer. Oh, yeah. And, and- I'll get to it. Yeah, sure. I'll get to it. Um, I like Gemma Chan. Sure. Thought she was great. Mm-hmm. Ken Watanabe is always good. Apparently he wrote that role. He was like, oh, look, I don't just want to cast him because I do all the time because yeah. he's in Godzilla. Yes. But then he was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Of course I got <laughs> Cast your friends. Why yeah, not? That's fine, yeah. And Alison Janney is in this. I loved her in this. Mm. I thought she was really good. There's definitely, because there's like a bunch of like, there's an, there's an American special forces team. Yes. And that was very aliens, mm. like that kind of vibe of like, this gun ho super over the top American team, which maybe also are a little bit overconfident, Mason. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I also thought yes. Amar Chadhar Patel, he's the guy he keeps showing up as different androids. Yes. He's, he's like in, a um he's like a stock model. Yeah, he's in Willow. 
And oh. he's great. And so just seeing him, he's not in it that much, but seeing right. him like appear and reappear. That was actually one thing I wish this movie did was that they. This says Danny McBride is in this movie. He's not. He was supposed to be at one point. Okay. Um, I think he was probably a, one of the soldiers, I assume. Yeah, but I think certainly. He would have been the pilot like he was in Alien Covenant. Covenant Co- Pro, Pro, Promethean. Prometheus sequel. Um, yep. <laughs> Catherine Waterson maybe. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I think that idea of because what you can do in this universe yes. is you can get, if you're a human, you can get your face scanned and then you can kind of donate it to AI and they yeah. can make you multiple, you know, copies or yes, whatever. Uh-huh. It's basically like. I don't know. What is it? It's like um, putting your putting free software out in the world. Except yeah, it's, your it's like getting scanned by Marvel and then they put you in the background of a exactly. movie. Exactly. Mm. Um, I think they should have maybe done more with that in this. Right. Uh, and I really liked Madeline Eula Voles who plays the little AI yeah, uh-huh. person in this. Um, I'm like, got a, good, got a good performance out of this child who's like seven or eight or something. Yeah, and yeah. no, I, like I thought, oh, how much of this, because all of the robots have this thing where like the back of their head is kind of neck and the back of the lower part of their head and like neck is it's missing is if missing, you're a human, but and you can see right through the where the they ear don't have would any be. Ears, yeah. yeah, and I thought, oh, was any of this like um, was it green prosthetic? screened off? But it, I don't think it is. Like okay. the behind the scenes footage, I I got, I oh. didn't, I didn't see any of that. There you go. Um, but yeah, I think uh, so. Something that I, I guess I, I didn't love about this is some of the robots, and in particular the kid robot. It's a bit vague what they can and can't. To yeah, right. How uh-huh. close they have to be, and mm, sure. all of these kinds of things. Yeah, uh huh. And it's like if you're fighting this war, why are you making robots that are as strong as humans? I guess, but I guess it's the point is that it's really a one sided war in that the robots, the AI, they don't want to fight a war. Mm. They want to stop the war and then just drop it. Yeah, right. Where the <laughs> if we could just yeah. drop it, where the, <laughs> the American. Like the Imperial Force is that thing of like, we need to destroy them or wait, or they're going to destroy us. Yes. And they're like, we're probably not going to destroy you. We'd better actually. spend trillions of dollars on a giant floating platform yeah. to destroy everything. Well, speaking of, I think the scale of that thing is fucking cooked. I think it's all over the place. In a, in, Where is it in orbit? How close oh, is yeah, it? Oh, sure, yeah, sure, sure, like sure. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> like if it's visible from the ground. Sometimes. It, <laughs> it, sometimes it is. Like is it – because it doesn't seem capable of moving from orbit. So is it – in? but sometimes it's like – it looks like you could shoot it out of the sky, but yeah. then in a lot of the scene, there's there's some scenes that take place on it, and it's like, oh, is it? So it's in orbit. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Who bloody cares? Who bloody cares? Do you some spoilers? Yes, I'm gonna say best movie ever. I yeah, think people should check it out. Too. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I. Do you think it'll do well? I don't know. Hmm? I can I think it. Well, it doesn't. I think it'll do all right. Apparently, it's getting a big push, but we're hmm. recording a bit earlier than all the official numbers That's true. trying to come out. So I don't. And look, maybe you, you know, know. There, there there might be some red carpet events where all the stars can show up now. So maybe they can. Yeah. So I'm just looking mm. now, and there's nothing concrete on this. Okay. As of yet, what's the Rotten uh, the range, Tomatoes score? It's like sixty nine ish. Yeah. <laughs> the range they're looking at is about fifteen to twenty two million, which okay. again would be good because it's an eighty million dollar movie. Mm. So that would be completely acceptable. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. It doesn't have to. And I mean, this is probably you know, this is why. I'm sure he, Gareth Edwards got to make this and why he'll almost certainly get to make another thing yeah. because he can say, well, look, it doesn't have to pull in a billion dollars. Yeah, give me money. I mean, unless executives' brains are so broken at this point that they're like, okay, well, if it's, it's $80 million, but if it could make a billion, we'd appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> that, that would be an even more profit, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Mm. if it could do that. That would reflect well on us. Mm. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe this will, you know, after all this, maybe they're looking for – Stuff that will just consistently turn in a, a decent profit. Or mm-hmm. bad decisions all the time. Oh, my God. It's probably going to be bad decisions all the time. Yeah. That's fun too, though. That's fun. Okay, we're in spoilers now. I think we it's are. time for big time spoiler time. So the thing they need to do yes. is they need the kid, mm-hmm. the AI kid, to blow up the big floating ship in the sky, which keeps yes. shooting everybody. So initially that nobody knows, nobody on the on the side of them, the Americans knows what this AI device yeah. even is, this ultimate weapon. So it turns out to be a little, little girl, a little yep. a simulant. Mm-hmm which is the robot with the, the human face, and her ability is that she can control all kinds of... Anything. Any, anything electronic, TVs. But it's and, like a, she's like growing into it. Yeah, yeah, she's also... She's capable of... She is, she is a, a new type of, of this simulant. She, she was built from 
a scans of a, a human embryo, and mm. so she can. She presumably could grow into an adult. Yeah, well, you see the embryo as a baby, start, so like I'm, baby size. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming that that is the case. Yeah, or, but, or it's an upgrade. Yeah, thing, I don't know. and she can like control, you know, electronics and electrical stuff, yep. you know, cars and weapons and all that sort of stuff. So once uh, John David Washington's character Joshua mm-hmm. finds her, he's like. I'm going to get her out of this. Yeah. I'm going to do some, we're going to do cool stuff. Mm. And so they, obviously the, the Americans they, and the humans want to kill her and Joshua's idea is, or the, the, the AI side is like, well, what we could do is if we get her up to the Nomad platform, the Americans' yeah. weapon platform, we can use her to switch it off and that will like turn the tide of this war and maybe mm. they'll leave us alone because it took them 10 years to build this platform. Yeah. So, but then John David Washington, but then they're like, well, that'll kill her. Mm. But man, what can you know? What can we do? Whatever. And he's like, and he's hiding. He's like, I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, I don't like. But then this. they're like, let's go up there anyway. Yeah, yeah. It actually might be cool. Yeah, it might be cool to go up there. Yeah, yeah. and he's he's brought into it because his wife, because he was undercover uh, with Gemma Chan, who turns out to be the creator, by the way. The Whoa, creator that for, the second creator, because her father was the first creator. Mm. Uh, because he believes that she's dead, and they were going to have a kid together. That's right. Uh, but she didn't actually. Die. He's told that she didn't actually die, and she's still out there. It turns out that she has been in a coma. Mm. the entire time and lost their child. Yes, but in a shopping centre. In a shopping centre, yeah. And uh, that doesn't come up again, which is weird. <laughs> it's true, yeah. It's a bit of a loose thread. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. But – and the child is – I'm going to check Kmart. <laughs> the child is also technically his child. Because yes. Because it's scanned from an embryo which he and her uh, it made together using sex, I assume. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Whatever that looks like. And <laughs> um, so – I feel like it didn't always emotionally hit for me that connection that he had to the child. Yeah, right. I mean, I guess that is the the downside perhaps of just filming exactly what you need. Yeah, okay, yeah. And maybe there could have been a couple more scenes to flesh that out idea. I think there was a good like there was there's a there's a good emotional vibe at the end when, you know, completely. Well, I completely you know, agree with that, yeah. The the point where, you know, uh they, you know, they they go up to the platform and they have to destroy it but then they get separated yeah. and they're the they're about you know the the girl can escape on the escape pod that's but a great stuck shot the other side. Escape yeah pod yeah yeah but there's out. a moment before that i think where where they're they're hugging and there's yeah. emotion but i can't remember what scene it was but i remember going that's some good work there yeah yeah and i, I agree with that i think yeah i agree that last scene and i think also because he talks about how like all he wants is like a, a one more moment with his wife mm-hmm. Gemma chan yes and the way that he gets that is it's it's established slightly earlier on that not slightly, it's pretty early, much earlier on, where you can scan somebody as they're dying or if mm. they're alive and then you can copy their consciousness into a robot or whatever. Mm. So then the very last thing is he gets like a final 20 seconds with his dead wife mm. at that point. That's right. And I thought that was really like, like yeah. a night. Because that's all he ultimately wanted. He that's right. You know, he was just like, oh, I'm happy to die. I'm cool with that. Mm. Um, I thought that was really good. Yeah. I mm. thought it was really good too. Yeah. A lot of people... Um, they might not like movies the way that we like movies. That's very true, actually. Yeah, but, but I guess they're yeah. having an in-depth understanding. I'd like to see Komodo and Mayo like movies as much as we like movies. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Gentle dorks. <laughs> yes. Got him. Got him. Got him. They probably reviewed this and done a very good job. I it. will be watching that review after it because I uh-huh. can't watch it before because mm. I'll just say that. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. I'm surprised it's not higher on Rotten Tomatoes actually looking at this, but mm-hmm. um, I, I don't think it's like a perfect movie. But mm. um, yeah, I mean, I just like this kind of like Neil Blomkamp used to do a bunch of this kind of stuff, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like Elysium District Nine, Chappie, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, sure. that kind of. But I, I'd love to kind of go back, and it doesn't have to be even this aesthetic, yeah. But just some, you know, this is like a, a very interesting way to make something. Yeah, yeah. It could be very grounded and very mm. like very mundane and just about. Yeah. You know, someone's Star life. Wars. Star Wars. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's there. Spider-Man's there. You hey guys, do you remember being in Star Wars? I'm in Star Wars. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah exactly. It could be that. It can be he that. He better goes a big liar and says he's in Star Wars. But, yeah, you're right. Just, you know, guerrilla style and small scale yeah. and know what you want before you go in and make that. Yep. And don't destroy people's lives building special effects and so forth. Unless Boy, you, I hope nothing yeah. comes out about crunch about this movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know, do you? Mm, you never know. You never know. Anyway, we always say that if something comes out about a thing or a person that we've said, spoke of before, we completely, we... We were just kidding when yeah, we said we liked them. And we don't. Yeah, that's right. And we right. don't, yeah. yeah that's right. right. Should we move it along? Let's move it along. Should we move it along to the uh, What We Reading segment? Yes. What's it called? It's called What We Were Reading. Yeah. What We Gonna Read. I agree. Yeah, nice. Ten years of this. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm doing the theme.
What are you doing? What am I doing? What are you reading? Well, I'll tell you what. We both watched the first episode of uh, Gen V. I'm going to stop you there. I watched the first 27 or so minutes. Well, Gen I'll v. stop you there. I watched about the same amount of time. Well, I'll that... stop you there. Go on. I'm loving the synchronicity. I'll tell you what. We finish each other's podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. We have independent podcasts of, from right. this that we We stick them together. We... <laughs> we record these in separate rooms. We don't even know what the other guy is saying. <laughs> And by coincidence, <laughs> for the last 10 years, they've synced up perfectly. Yeah, I think that'll stop And I think week. they will for a while. Oh, no. Well, that probably went perfectly. Oh, no, we're, talk- pro- we're that, talking at the same that time. That probably went perfectly. That probably went perfectly because we're in separate rooms. Oh, yeah, we wouldn't know, wouldn't so we? So we wouldn't know. <laughs> I am assuming it went perfectly, as always. I think you mean separate balconies. Ah, that's true. That's because yeah. we were doing a oh, different yeah, yeah, thing yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, anyway, we both watched some of Gen V because I think well, I yep. was I was short on time. I don't know about you. Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I quite like it. I think it's, it's all right. Yeah, okay. I get I, I haven't finished it yet. I mean, so. look, cynics would say more of the same, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm still, again, because I'm 27 minutes in, these mm-hmm. characters are still like. Yeah. We'll you say. said one was bland. Yeah, I did. Wow. And I'll save that. Oh, you're not going to say which one it is? No, I'm going to wait till I watch the three episodes okay. before I cast massive Stones. Okay, great. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's unfair because it's kind of a character who's supposed to be like he's supposed to be a golden boy. Yeah. In fact, his name is literally yes. Golden Boy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I like the cast generally. So we've got the the premise, of course, is that it's it's it is a you know in the in the in the universe of the boys, yeah, uh, a bunch of parents had their ch- their like their children in utero genetically altered to potentially develop superpowers, mm-hmm. and so now they need a place to uh, become superheroes. And by that I mean either fight crime or mostly just be like become influencers. Yeah, exactly. So there's this universe. There's the, there's this university, and you know, uh, you know, which is pr- pretty standard issue. But there's a, yeah, it's 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 very heavily. Most of the most of the people there are there to learn how to be like social media savvy yep. and get a lot of Instagram followers and get sponsorships and because that's it's like this a universe. TikTok house. It's like a TikTok house, exactly yeah. right. But we follow a, a woman. Uh, who, uh, when she developed her powers, which are blood based, mm-hmm. she accidentally killed her parents. So yep. she's been in like a halfway house kind of situation. situation yeah. And now she's like, okay, well, if I get good grades and I and I make my way up through this thing, I could be, you know, potentially be a good, you know, a superhero, be in the seven. Yeah. Uh, but of course, then there's uh, boys are like, I don't think with blood powers, they're not going to be loving a blood. No, a from blood a marketing based. standpoint, are they? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but then then there's people, boys, and they're like, why don't you have a drink? Once you go to a party and she's like, I don't know, but this is a standard thing you yeah. do in this sort of show, so I guess I will. And that's where we watched up to. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they just have a nice night and Maybe they go they home yeah, and, and nobody notices over. that they broke curfew. I yeah, don't know. Don't know. Possible. No way to know. But I like, you know, that that main character is good. There's a supporting character and she is like. Um, the shrinky one. She has the ability to shrink, but yeah. she has to do it with bulimia. Yeah. So it's kind of Horrendous. very unpleasant. Yeah. Uh, and she is sort of a. Uh, she has like some social media presence where she just does tiny stuff. Yeah. Like she fights a rat or whatever it <laughs> yeah. is. Like she like she boxes it yeah, yeah, yeah. in a boxing ring. I like her. Yeah, I like me too. Her. I think she's, she's sort of got, you know, she's sort of got that vibe of like she, you know, she she's kind of fun and and but she she's like eager to please, but she's clearly got like low self esteem. Yeah. yeah. Because her power isn't like a it's not a cool power. It's not. A, it's not a crime fighting power nah. necessarily, kind of thing. Nah. It's not. She. She's not invincible, or she can shoot fire or whatever. Yeah. So she's kind of like, like, where's that going to go? Are people going to take advantage of her and yeah. that sort of stuff? Um. And there's other people. There's, there's other the golden people. boy. There's the golden boy. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Played by Patrick Schwarzenegger. That's right. Uh. But yeah. Again, we'll see. One show I have also been watching. Oh, is, uh, Clancy Brown's in it. Oh, Clancy Brown's great. Does he have superpowers? I don't know. I guess we'll never know. We'll find out. Mm. Uh, I've been watching New Futurama. Oh, New Futurama. Which is a lot like, yes, thank you, which is a lot like old Futurama. Go on. I think it made the mistake of being like, Zap Brannigan's cancelled. Oh, oh, it's yeah. COVID. <laughs> right, and it's yeah. like. I was going to say, is it current into the times and fresh? Like, it's always been that way in terms of yeah. like, you <laughs> would pick a niche topic <laughs> of the day, but it feels really like this is the cancellation episode. This is the COVID right, episode. Yeah. This is the Amazon episode. Mm. And I there's some episodes which. Don't this is, they do a Dune episode? Okay, in it, which is set in like a litter box, and but there's stuff in the stuff that I like about Future Mum is when it doesn't kind of do that. So when it's not doing that, I'm like, that's fun. It's fun and there's yeah, good right. jokes and I like the okay. cast and uh, 
Richard Nixon's head is Richard Nixon's yeah, head in Richard it. Yeah, Nixon's head comes back at one point. I, okay, I, I think there's been ten episodes so far. Is this on Disney Plus? It's on Disney Plus okay, or right. Star or whatever. I don't know what mm. it's on, but uh, yeah, it is on Disney or Hulu. I don't. Who cares? I care. Then yes, it is. For Great, you, it will be. But um, no, I, I didn't finish the last season. Okay, and I was going to, but then I didn't. Mm. They also go back to previous episodes. You remember when? Amy and Kiff have like children and they leave oh, them sure. in a bond. They're like, we'll right. come back in 20 years and it's been 20 years. Right, so, okay. Like, there's some stuff okay, that they Okay, sure, sure, sure. Um, you just wish there wasn't a cancellation episode on a COVID episode. Yeah, but they're even like, they're not even bad, but right. it just feels like, I don't know, like yeah. you don't. I understand. You know, Zap gets mm. cancelled because he's rude and it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, is it? Does Speaking it? of, I got I to gotta finish Red Dwarf. I still got like, oh, okay. you know, the most recent couple yeah, of yeah. seasons. I was just thinking the other day, and you've just reminded me. I should probably I finish the movie. The movie that they made mm. more recently, The Promised Land. Yeah, is that the? I didn't okay. mind it at all. All right. Yeah. Is it still have a laugh track? Yes. Great. I love yeah. that. Mm. Does it? I don't remember actually. Anyway, that's our so. Red Dwarf episode. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's our Red Dwarf episode. It's a Red Dwarf episode. We, we it did it, folks. Yet again. That's right. What do you got, Mason? Oh, it's time for lettuce. Wow. That's right. Already? Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god, Mason! Can you believe it? Can you? Yeah, I can believe it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll play the theme then. We're doing this for five hundred years, or however long we've been doing it. <laughs> Does bloody feel like it? <laughs> bloody feel like it, Mason. <laughs> the classic one was the letters. Oh, letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. I know they're here right now. We're gonna do letters. Lamb. This is a letter segment. Is that of the show. what we're saying now, Blam? That's what we're doing. I love that. Uh, this is the segment of the show where if you hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter, That's it's a right. tweet I might see it, or your Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com if you want to shoot through a Gmail. Shoot through that Gmail. To Nick Mason. That's uh, right. You got an email? Here's I have an email from Leon. Oh, okay, I'll stop. Who says, Hey, 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 Tom Turbo. What? Hey, James and Mason. Greetings from Austria. Hello. I uh, love your podcast, but it does make commuting really awkward for me because I always break out into laughter listening to you guys while I'm in a crowded subway with really serious-looking passengers. I just want to point out that this is not supposed to be a funny show, so I don't know what yeah, you that's, would be laughing yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. It's that Austrian sense of humour. Oh, okay, I yeah. don't know. Okay, you know. yeah. Last week it was the 30th anniversary of an Austrian interactive crime show for kids called Tom Turbo. All right. The show lasted for 21 seasons and it has more what? than 400 episodes and the main character is a bicycle called Tom Turbo – who solves world-shattering crimes with the help of some random kids and his boss who lives in the zoo of Vienna. Look at this fucking thing. That's what I'm saying. Have you seen it? Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> added a picture. Tom Turbo has a really deep voice and 111 gadgets that help him defeat the villains. It's so bizarre and quite lovely at the same time, and most people who didn't grow up watching it think that it's just crazy talk. Yeah, it looks like an AI made that. <laughs> it looks like if you went crazy cartoon Ch- children's show character. Yeah. That's a bicycle, maybe. But also, it looks like it's made of balloons. Yeah. Uh, so his question is, so I wonder if you guys watched any shows that sound like fever dreams when you talk to people yes. about them. Something that is really specific for a certain age group and or region, but is also part of a big collective memory for that demographic. I know what you're. I know what I'm going to say. Lift off. I was going to say Mully Grubs. Mully Grubs. Mully Grubs. Uh, yeah. I don't really know what Mully Grubs was about, but I think it was a general, maybe it was a, like a, did it have cartoons in it? I don't know. But the point, the thing of Molly Grubbs was, yeah, th- there was a character in Molly Grubbs which was they'd clearly taken a person's face yep. and like put a, covered him in blue makeup or a blue bo- head yeah. sock or whatever. Yeah, and so their entire face had been deleted from frame except for the eyes and the mouth and yes. the nose, I yep. think. And then they put a vocoder effect on this person's voice, and so it was just this nightmarish creature that was like, "Hello, children." <laughs> You know the Molly yeah. Grubbs well, well, I know, Mason. Yeah. It's still, look it up because it's mm. really frightening. I just found a list. Do you remember, I mean, not as frightening to adults. No. Do you remember Plasmo? It was like Vaguely. a stop motion, like, claymation oh, yeah. space show. Yeah, Plasmo, yeah, Plasmo, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. Plasmo. Mm. Uh, what else was there? Uh, oh, Johnson and Friends. Yep. That was like Toy Story before Toy Story. Sure. It was like a kid's room and it was just a Oh, that's Australian. That is Australian. Nightmare. I yeah. mean, we've mentioned Agro. Oh, yeah. Agro's Cartoon Connection, who was a rude puppet uh, who would always – Introduced cartoons with with a with a human woman, yeah. Uh, but was by all accounts like always just grabbing, just a grabby puppet. Mm. It was also made from a buff. Remember this? What is that? Ah, yeah. I don't. That was that one was called. Mm. Oh God, pigs breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess like yeah, lift off. These yep. are from an era when they just they needed like there was a children's show and they needed 
a, a, a thing that kids would react to so they were just allowed to go hog wild. Yeah. These days you, they wouldn't do that, I no, don't no, think. No, they no, wouldn't be, they'd be like, we can't trust local designers to make up something kids would respond to. Let's have it be Optimus Prime or whatever, <laughs> you know, because he's a solid, yeah. he's solid gold, you know what I mean? As about this one, I forgot this was Australian. Ah, the bookworm. The book place. Mm. Remember the book place? Yeah, vaguely. I knew the TV you had gotten because the book, book, the book place would come on at 9 o'clock after all the good cartoons in the right, morning yeah, and it would yeah. be like, it's time for a worm to read you a book and I'm yeah, like, great. fuck you. It's interesting he's called Tom Turbo. Yeah. Is, does Turbo mean the same thing in English and what are they, what are they speaking in Austria? Mr. Is it German? Squiggle? Is it German? Yeah, Austrian Okay, and some, some German, I believe. Yeah. Is, are they different languages? I mean, I think there was variations, but there, there's a lot of Are you just overlap. guessing? Are you guessing? Are you Googling it real quick? <laughs> I am. Googling it real I've quick. I've been there. Yeah. What were they talking? Long time Are they speaking ago. German? I think it's a, like, German is an official language, but I'm pretty sure there's like. And a language called Austrian? No, there's not like a language. It's like a. Dialect. No, it's not even a dialect. It's just slightly different. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, that's no, a dialect. Ger- that would be a dialect. No, but it's not even. I, I, look, I'm wrong. It's probably just German. Okay. Fuck. Well, I'm going to put. I'm going to put Tom Turbo into Google Translate and see what it says. Tom Do you remember Turbo. these guys? The ferals? Yeah, I do remember the ferals, of course. Yuck. Yep, the literal translation is Tom Turbo. There you go. It's a German. There you go. It's very cool. Oh, boy, is it. Oh, the TV show Amazing. I love that show, man. I just wanted to go on the TV show Amazing and win that Game Boy. Hosted by James But you Sherry. didn't, did you? No, because they were all filmed in Sydney or whatever. I didn't live mm. in Sydney. Why would I? You could have moved. I could have brought you could my have, you could have, No, you could have left your family, moved up. Oh, yeah. You, you could have left your family and lived in a cardboard box in Sydney and then when you auditioned for Amazing, they would have been like, what? You'd be like, I, I left my family. I divorced my family so <laughs> no, I could win this game No, you'd have to go boy. through your school. You go through your school. Oh. So I have to enroll in a Sydney school or whatever. Yeah, right. And, do and you like have that. to put your address cardboard box. Believe me, I've thought about this, Mason. Okay. I've thought about this a lot. Uh-huh. And there's no real way for me to make this happen. Even now, you could simply with purchase, my immense wealth up then, here. It's true. You could purchase a Game Boy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I could just do that, couldn't I? Yeah. But I want to run the maze. Well, I was going to say yeah. they might have been like, "Well, young man, what if we just give you a Game Boy that you can use in your in no, cardboard I'm box?" The You'd maze, be like, "No, I'm going to win it. Yeah, I'm going to win it." James Sherry, amazing. Exactly. You would have said. Uh, I've got a tweet here. I'd love to hear it from tweet. Red Lion Flames. He says, "I hope you talked about uh, talk about the new Doctor Who 60th, 60th anniversary trailer on the podcast this week or next week. It looks great. A real return to form. Yeah, so it was a return of uh, David Tennant and um, mm-hmm. um, Donna Noble. What's her yes. name? Catherine Heigl. Yes, Catherine mm-hmm. Heigl yep. from uh, the Knocked Up franchise. That's right. Not the second movie. This is forty. She's not in that one. She's only in the first <laughs> one. What is her name? Catherine Doctor Who. Catherine Doctor Who. Tate. There we go. Love it." Any relation to Andrew Tate, do you think? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. She's his mum. Oh, no. I know. Is that true? Right? Yeah, it's true. Know that. Yeah. yeah. Work a bit harder on your kids, Catherine Tate. <laughs> one of them became Andrew Tate and the other Tate. The other one's bad too. Yeah. yeah. They're both bad. Yeah. Mm. I think. Um, They're not related though. It's just a coincidence. Oh, good. They both have that head shape. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> So, um, no, it does look really good. I will mm. be dipping back into Doctor Who for this. I think it's three specials, isn't it, or three episodes, and they – Then they're going to reboot the with uh, – he's going to – not reboot. They're going to yeah. – he's going to regenerate into Shuri Gatwa. I want, do you think it's going to be a situation where he's just taken on an old form um, for whatever reason? I think they'll probably do a – and, again, I'm, I'm not across yeah. Doctor Who at all anymore and haven't been for about 10 years, but – I reckon if I had to guess, mm. I would, and I do. Yeah. I don't have to, but I'm going to. You will. I'm going to say that by the end of the three episodes, that timeline is undone. Yeah. And so it's back to Jodie Whittaker, and then she regenerates into the new guy. But isn't there footage of you see the new guy and he's wearing the David Tennant suit? Well, it's a trick. Oh. They've tricked you, haven't they? <laughs> so I feel like it certainly worked tricked. on you, didn't it? Yeah, no, I don't like that, mm, actually. Yeah. yeah. I don't like how they've done that to me. Yeah. Made me look like a real fool. Yeah. Because this will be what happens. That's right. And both of us will remember this. Yeah, and then people will put up YouTube where they'll react to what we're saying here. <laughs> like all the big all the big hoof on, all the big dogs. All the big all the big dogs on Hootube <laughs> will be like, Can you believe these two idiots? I mean one idiot. But James is such a big idiot, we're counting him twice. They'll oh say, wow. Yeah, because he didn't think that would happen. The thing that Mesa said <laughs> would happen that did happen. I don't like this. Yeah, I know. It makes me feel bad. Yeah, we could take this out though. No, I think it's important for me to feel like this. I think so. For an extended period yeah, of time. you're finally going to learn. It's humbling me. I don't think you will learn, nah. but it should be where you'll learn. Yeah, it should be, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Got another Gmail? Yeah, here's a Gmail from Joshua. Joshua? It says Joshua Thomas, but it's probably not the Joshua Thomas we're thinking. No? No. Is it Rob Thomas? It's not Rob Thomas, no. Okay, good. I literally just, anyway. Hello, gents. Long time weekly whacker to do and proud to be one. After a Whoa. lovely engagement with cancer, 
Thanks for your podcast oh, for keeping boo. my spirits up during treatment. A mate and I decided to do a trip to Australia from Salt Lake City, Utah, to celebrate life, beating cancer and all that jazz. Just about awesome. to finish a week in Sydney, and we're hitting Melbourne on Monday for a week. Whoa! James, can you recommend a good kombucha brand to try while out there? Yeah, it's called Liberty Kombucha. Nice. It's the best one. Don't try anything else. Okay, because he said the only brand I've seen in Sydney is Remedy, and it's just okay. Get the fuck out of here. No, yeah, it's right? bad. Do not yeah, drink yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liberty Kombucha, uh, the black cherry is really good. I find the um, the uh, orange one is good also. Yeah. But, you know, to try. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try any. Mason, as an international party boy, any good recommendations and sights to see in Melbourne? Mm-hmm. Go to the zoo. Oh, yeah. Go to the National Gallery. I do love Pretty the good zoo. In there. I went to Hillsville uh, Go to the National the Gallery day. and have Devonshire tea at the National Gallery. That's fine. If, in fact, they still do that. Which they might or they might, might not. Maybe go to the show. If it's no, still on when do you not get go here. to the show. You haven't been in years. You tell me. You haven't that. been in years. I know. <laughs> but we're getting, we get another guy to go. And then he'll be like, I had a bad time. We can be like, we knew it. If you want to know more about the show, this coming episode of Carabatta Garbage, The Phantom, we there's probably like five minutes on the show. On the show, going to the <laughs> show. Specifically. Yeah. For reasons that will become clear in the video. That's right. Uh, but yeah, what else? Cool. Just find some cool bars, man. Yeah, cool bar, man. What's a good bar? I I, I know. I used to probably I one do of the know. Show. I go and I go to cool bar. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, wow. just Google it. Google yeah. Cool Bar. That's right. Yeah. Go to Chapel Street, South Yarra. You could. Yeah. You sure. could. Yeah. Go to the Jam Factory. No, no. No, don't do that. That's a bad place, okay. actually. Yeah. No, don't Especially like if you there. want jam, because they don't do that. They don't actually any. do that. No, no, no. Don't no, do yeah. that anymore. If they ever did it. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. This is from the Nerd Authorities. Congratulations God. on beating cancer away. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. We recently started a podcast inspired by you guys. We're Whoa. currently covering disaster movies. You got any suggestions? Also, any tips, advice for getting a podcast rolling? You guys are the goats of all time. Well, look, it's been 10 years. Yep. So you think we've learned We are something. a couple of quirked up white boys with the sauce. It's true. We're goaded with the sauce. We've got a bit of swag. And it's interesting that we got much older since we started. A little think? bit older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Mm. But um, I don't know. I think it's – like I think audio quality is more important. We've talked about this yeah, before. Yeah, audio you can't quality get, is important. You can't get away with bad audio quality no, anymore. People will not we got in – before yeah. you had to have good or, yes. good audio quality. Uh, consistency, consistency is the key as well. Yes. Like, um, you know, even if you only do one podcast a month, yep. same time every month. Exactly. Because people will otherwise be like, oh, I'm looking forward to that episode of that podcast. doesn't come out. They find yep. something else. Play to your strengths. So whatever the dynamic is that you guys have. Yeah. Just Whether it be a cool it. guy and a grub yep. or a grub and a cool guy <laughs> yep. or two grubs. Two grubs. Two cool guys is illegal, yeah, I believe. You, you can't allowed, do that. You're not that won't work. It doesn't work. Nobody People will like that. rejects that. Yeah, no, they. Yeah. It's like that first version of The Matrix that was too perfect. People's <laughs> minds will be like, so they've got a podcast, yeah. but they're both cool guys. Yeah. I don't like it. We started like that, actually. Yeah, that's right. And then we both went grub. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Because we, we both made the decision independently to be the, become the grub. <laughs> and we both showed up and we both were the grub. So. <laughs> You know? um, I think pick a structure. Yeah. It doesn't have to like be like strict, yeah. but like a format that you can adhere to but if so it doesn't just go yeah. nowhere. But if it's news, review a movie, what we're reading, letters, we'll kill you. Yeah, because you know, like, that's ours. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. uh, get people to review the show. It's mm-hmm. probably important. Yeah. Uh, call to action. Yeah. Call to action. Uh, try and do it in person. I don't think that's as important now, but I mm. find that way easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're two grubs because you get used to the yes. smell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah. You know. Also, I know I said this earlier, but really lean into like it being your voice because I will listen to anything if I like the person. Oh, yeah. And it could be the, like an amazing concept, but if I'm like, this guy sucks, I will sure. not. I will not. Be- so if you suck, if you're out there and you suck, yeah. too bad. Too bad. Yeah. But that's on you. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Uh, anything else? Don't get too many people. Don't have, have like six people. It's too many. Yeah. Unless you're true. like Auntie Donna. Yeah. But presumably you're not. So yeah. you can't. Yeah. 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 If uh, this is any member of Auntie Donna under, <laughs> under a pseudonym, I think you've got it. It's fine. Yeah. Mm. You're going to figure it out. Also, like, I know ours run pretty long, but like it doesn't have to be. That's true. It can be 40 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Or, let's make it as long. And edit it. And I don't mean like you don't have to like chop and change and move everything around. I just mean just tighten it up. Yeah. Like this is – Collings tightens this up. It's just like – Make the gap slightly smaller. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tweak the audio so the levels are – again, these are things that Collings does better than I can do. Have a guy go, yep, after every sentence. Like go, add yep. that in so yep. it makes it sound like the yep. guy's listening. Um, Put clips on. Yep. Yep. Put clips on TikTok. Yep. Because you can actually get boosted there. That's true. Because they'll promote – they just promote – really well for some reason. It's like how the algorithm works there. That's right. Um, anything else? That's Cash all my- prizes. Cash prizes, that's a big one. Yeah. Oh, don't overcommit to shit. 
Don't like be cash like prizes. that. And don't like be like, we're going to do Patreon, we're going to do this, 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 and this. It's too hard. Just if you're going to do that, keep it simple. Stupid. Something, yeah, keep, keep, keep stupid. it. Stupid. Yeah. Make it achievable to, to you. Stupid. Just make it stupid. And make it stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else? That's everything, I think. Yeah. And it just might not work. Or it might. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah, yeah. know. Yeah. Sometimes it does. Get really lucky. Yeah. Get really lucky is a big one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Got another email? I got one more email. This is from John. John. Hey, guys. James always says the wonderful story of Henry Sugar is his favorite Roald Dahl story. It's is true. That true. It yeah, is true. true. Yeah. And I wanted to let you know, if you didn't already, that Wes Anderson's short film adaptation yes. has just been released on Netflix, and over the next three days, three more Wes Anderson adaptations of Roald Dahl short stories will be released as well. I will be watching that. Yeah. I haven't had the chance because I've got to finish that episode of Gen V. Also, i got four episodes of Loki. I've got to tell you this. What? But I think I'm just not going to. Let's watch them now. Do you want to? On the podcast. No, we can go. We'll put the audio through the speakers. And we can actually put the video on the YouTube. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Um, When's that I, out? A couple of four, fourth of October or yeah, something like something that. Like next week. Soon, I think yeah. I'm not gonna. I think okay, I'm great. Gonna, if you want them, I'll, you can have them. But um, I'm not gonna. No, because you're allowed to. Because that's true. Yeah. This, no, that is together. true. It's not illegal, basically. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, he says, as a huge Wes Anderson fan, this might be very happy, and I hope you uh, enjoy them all as much as I will. I haven't watched Asteroid City yet. Me neither. But it's on streaming. You can buy yeah. it. So I'm going to buy it. I'll buy I'll it. Watch it. I'm going to buy it. Oh, God. It's on streaming, but it's not available on Blu-ray for like another two weeks. Oh, God. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Do you have a big wall of Blu-ray? No, I have some Blu-ray. That's interesting. I have a scattered amount of Blu-ray. I've got your Blu-ray of another round, which oh, I yeah. still haven't watched. Well, you but should I watch will. it. I know, Mason. I'm watching Gen Right, ne- right watch it now. One. Okay, I'll, I'll watch, watch Loki, <laughs> and you can watch that. We'll upload them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pretend he's the magician guy. I could do that, couldn't I? Uh, it's from Parker Mc, uh, Milken, who's Millie Can. There we go. Who says this is for you? Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Any thoughts on the trackless tram? Now oh. this is a car, I assume, is that, <laughs> um, or a bus. Yeah, in a way, about? I think. Yeah. What are we talking about? What's I think this? they have them in Europe. And go well, what's the point of it then? I don't. It's know. a bus, right? It sounds like a bus. Is it just like a low bus? Yes. Would it be easier or harder? I feel like it'd be harder. Right? I think it'll be harder. Because you'd have to steer. You don't yeah. steer. You don't do anything, basically. I do heaps of stuff. I, you don't. I do heaps of stuff. <laughs> Someone sit behind Mason and just... just so, do note down trip. all the things that I do. <laughs> yeah. It'll be heaps of stuff. What I would do is just write... At the start of the journey, just write heaps of stuff in a checkbox, <laughs> and at the end, just check it off. Yeah, you go. You'll yep, be correct. You go that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and know. I understand a lot of it is spatial awareness also, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. We always look and... Yeah, yeah, Can't yeah. be killing nobody on, yeah, this, on the that's road. that's exactly right. And you haven't yet, as far that's as I'm aware. So, yeah. Cool. Anything else? I'm or killing him with kindness, James. Are you? Yeah. Or you're like, get off the road, you fucking idiot. Exactly. Yeah. That's mm. kind, though, yeah, I as opposed so. to killing somebody. I agree. Yeah. Mm. All right, all right. Anyway, that's the whole show, folks. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it very much from the bottom of our grubby little hearts. Oh, yes. Uh, folks, uh, you can. Wait. You can? You can. <laughs> if I could leave you with anything, some advice, it would be you can. You if can. you thought you couldn't, you can. Except for that guy about the podcast. I don't think you can. You could. Okay. <laughs> No? I think we gave him too much advice. Okay. Yeah. That was only for him. I hope that's right. Heard that, by the anyway, way. thank you, uh, folks, for subscribing. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast because that's how we get some new listeners. And another way is if you'd left a five star review on a, your podcast catcher of choice, just right. do it in app there. And uh, James will read it out if it's five stars. Go come, I will. Go come here. So Wacky Wally 8 who says the weekly plan is 10 years old. Only gets better every year. It's PN. It's PN? I think he meant on. But he wrote PN. Oh, sort of okay, right. And this is from JD Lopez. That'd be a good slogan for us, though. The Weekly Planet. It's peeing. It's peeing. We can't stop it. Mm. And it's clear pee, which you know means it's hydrated. Mm. Love these Aussie boys. As a Mexican American, I was surprised to discover how much I enjoyed the po- this podcast. Their excellent chemistry and banter between Broden, and Mark, and Zach. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, are you sons Keep of you coming back every week wow. for another hilarious episode of improv and funny, or should I say, silly characters? Wow. The Auntie Donna podcast is a must listen. Wow. Still five star, whatever. Yeah. I'll take it. I was going to say that review was muy caliente. <laughs> now I won't. No? No. Good. I'll say it's no mas. I'll say it's buenos is, dias. That's pretty good. <laughs> that is good. Which is bad, depending on how you say it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What do they speak there? In Austrian? Yeah. Anyway, keep going. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, folks. If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Yeah. That's pretty much where you can go. That's true. Uh, you can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Facebook group. You can mm-hmm. go to the Weekly Planet Podcasting subreddit and Discord, where you can have fun, civil chats about podcasts and all kinds of pop culture. Get in there, talk about talk about the TV shows and the movies and just a Tell us funny, about funny, the good old movies. time. Thank you to uh, Maisie and Sarabi and Fidel Woo! for moderating over there Woo! and doing all sorts of stuff, clips, uh, channels, and TikToks and all sorts of stuff. 
Folks, if you want to follow some people on the socials, first follow Rob Collings, who edits this podcast and makes videos and keeps you up to date on all things The Weekly Planet. So he's at Raw Collings and at The Weekly Planet. I am Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and I am Nick Mason on Instagram. Yes. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. everywhere. If you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. That's right, patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck it in a buck. Chuck it in a buck or an amount you would not miss. Chuck it a dollar. Or if you've got nine US dollars per month, you can go to bigsandwich.co. Bonus podcast, movie commentaries, early videos, video game, let's plays, <gasps> all sorts of stuff. Oh, my God. Uh, next week. Yes. What's out? Let me check. Saw? We could, we could watch we could Saw. Do Saw. Apparently it's quite good. Yeah, Some okay. people are saying it's the best. The best? Yeah. I'll tell you the best movie. The best. Oh, in the meantime, thank you to the Boot and the Basilisk and Rackham for all the musical themes. And go to tpublic.com, search for The Weekly Planet. Maybe you'll find a T-shirt or a mug or something. It's coming soon. Here we go. I should have done this. And- oh, Expendables. Oh, we could watch Expendables. I don't want to watch that. Exorcist Believer. Mm, we could do that. We could. Um, I'm going to check the Hoyts website. That's what I'm on right now. Oh, well, Taylor maybe, Swift. Talk, talk about Taylor Swift. The Eras Tour. Oh. Uh, oh, Killers of the Flower. Oh, no, it's not till the 19th. Mm. No, Taylor Swift's not out for a while, actually. Equalizer 3, Haunting in Venice. Yeah, I didn't see the second one. Okay. <laughs> you did, I don't think you have to. There's no continuity. I'm sorry, I won't see the second one or the third one. Oh, wow. That's what I meant to say, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Sound of Freedom? <laughs> I do want to watch the Sound of Well, watch of it on your own. Yeah. <laughs> Haunted Mansion? In, in a mere month and plus, it'll be Halloween. So we could watch it in advance of that. The perfect opportunity to watch mm. The Haunted Mansion. Oh, Gran Turismo based on a true story still out. Oh, very good. Well, well, yeah. well, well, well. I already saw that, though. Yeah, well. Anything else? Nah, we'll figure something out. That's awesome. <laughs> if that's another podcasting tip. Figure out your next episode on the air. Yeah, definitely. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Why not, hey? Uh, Who's people, going to stop us? People that's love the magic the... of podcasting. Anyway, we'll talk about some. Maybe probably Gen V as well. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what we have to do this week? You have to finish the soap because oh. we've got to do a video. <laughs> Mason, you've got a shotgun, a bunch of Star Wars. Great, week, I love please, that. if you could. Great. All right, thanks, everyone. That. Okay, grab that jammy, guys. Bye. We'll say, say bye. Bye. Bye.